Today we're going to be discussing the muscles of the abdomen and chest. And I'm going to begin by looking at a couple of landmarks that will be important for us. This white line here is the linea alba, literally translates to white line. And then these lines running transversely here are referred to as the tendinous inscriptions of the rectus abdominis muscle. We also see these white areas here. These are the aponeuroses. And notice that there's a white area that covers part of this rectus abdominis muscle. That white area is referred to as the rectus sheath. It is the aponeurosis of a muscle called the external abdominal oblique muscle, which is this muscle here, as well as part of the aponeurosis of the internal abdominal oblique muscle. And we'll be discussing both of those in just a minute. Let's begin with the rectus abdominis muscle. Notice that I've turned the model uh, 90 degrees so that we have a little better view of this on the screen. So the rectus abdominis muscle is sometimes referred to as the six-pack muscle. And this particular muscle is used in flexion of the trunk, as will all the abdominal muscles that we've talked, we're going to talk about today. The origin of this muscle is the pubic crest and the symphysis pubis. And let me show you where that is. So this is the pubic crest right here. And this is the symphysis pubis. The insertion of this particular muscle is going to be the costal cartilages 5 through 7. So in this general area here, the insertion of the muscle, as well as the xiphoid process, which of course would be uh, the very tail end of the sternum, the very distal end of the sternum. Let's take a look at another muscle now. This is the external abdominal oblique. Now this one has fibers running downward as if you were putting your hands in your pockets. So external abdominal oblique. Again, it's involved in flexion of the abdomen and it is going to originate on the lower eight ribs, so the lowest eight ribs, and it's going to insert on the anterior iliac crest which of course is right here. This is the anterior iliac crest. As well as our friend, the linea alba, which is this region right here. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. The next muscle is the internal abdominal oblique muscle. It has its fibers running the opposite direction of the external abdominal oblique. Remember, the external abdominal oblique has its fibers running downward as if you were putting your hands in your pockets. This one is running essentially 90 degrees to those fibers until, of course, you get to the, the uh, pelvic cavity, in which case the fibers run more or less transversely. Now, this one's a little bit different in that it has essentially the opposite origin and insertion of the external abdominal oblique, not quite, but close. So the origin of this muscle is going to be the inguinal ligament, which is a ligament that essentially connects your legs to the rest of your trunk. Um, imagine brief underwear. The holes of brief underwear essentially follow the inguinal ligament. We also are looking at an origin on essentially two-thirds, two-thirds of the iliac crest. The insertion, however, for this particular model is going to be the last costal cartilages, so the final costal cartilages, as well as the aponeurosis of the, uh, that travels to the pubic bone. So the aponeurosis of this particular uh, muscle essentially travels down to the pubic bone, sort of makes a long connection like this, and this would also be considered its insertion. The transverse abdominis is an easy muscle to find because all we have to do is look at the interior of this particular model and we see these muscle fibers running transversely. This is the transverse abdominis. Its origin once again is going to be the inguinal ligament as I described earlier as well as the full iliac crest, so the entire iliac crest here and uh, also the thoracolumbar fascia and the lower eight ribs. So the lower eight ribs are going to be right in this area here. The insertion for this model is going to be, and the insertion for this muscle is going to be 
Bilvenia alba. Let's take a look at this interior of this model. And we see that, again, transverse abdominis, and also the white area here, which is the aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis, and also the partial aponeurosis of internal abdominal oblique. Notice that there are these arching lines here. These are referred to as the arcuate lines. Below the arcuate lines are exposed rectus abdominis muscle. And that's because all of the aponeuroses are anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle below the arcuate line. Above the arcuate line, we do actually see aponeuroses of the transverse abdominis muscle as well as, once again, the internal abdominal oblique. But those aponeuroses travel anteriorly once we get below the arcuate line. This, of course, gives more support to the pelvic cavity. Now let's take a look at some chest muscles. This particular muscle here is the pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis major muscle has its origin on the sternum as well as the clavicle, and its insertion travels to the intertubercular groove of the humerus as well as the greater tubercle of the humerus. This is a very important muscle for adduction, ADD duction, right, as well as medial rotation. So it's a medial rotator. Now if we take another model and pretend that we've removed the pectoralis major. So this is pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor is going to be the muscle that is below pectoralis major. So deep to pectoralis major. And it has its origin on ribs three through five. Its insertion is on the coracoid process of the scapula. Let me just show you where that is. This is the coracoid process of the scapula here. And so what this muscle can do when it contracts is to protract the scapula, that is bring the scapula forward. And when it um, also, it can be involved with uh, inspiration, so drawing the ribs upward, in which case the scapula is fixed and almost acts like an origin. The next set of muscles we'll take a look at are going to be the external intercostal muscles. The external intercostal muscles are for inspiration. So notice that you always include an X and an N, external intercostals, inspiration. They are going to originate on the lower rib here, and they are going to insert on the upper rib. So this is going to be for inspiration. Notice that the fibers are running downward, just like those external abdominal oblique muscles. Now, we can also see a little bit of musculature here with fibers running the opposite way, just like the internal abdominal obliques. And these particular fibers are for the muscle, the internal intercostal muscles. Internal intercostal muscles have the opposite origin insertion. And so the, let's take a look at those uh, in a different view though. And that's going to be inside, and that's going to be a much easier view. And so these are the internal intercostal muscles here. Now these, as you might guess, may have the opposite type of action. And so um, the action for this one will be forced expiration. So notice we put an N and an X together once again. Lastly, we have these muscle fibers, which are the fibers of the uh, transversus thoracis. Lastly, we have these fibers for the transverse thoracic muscle. They're going to originate on the sternum, and you can appreciate the uh, insertion is going to be on the costal cartilages, these uh, ribs, it's kind of middle ribs. The uh, function of this particular muscle is forced expiration once again, just like the internal intercostal muscles.